Welcome to Bot Hostage Diplomacy. We work to free hostages and the unjustly detained around the world. Together with their families, we share their stories and let you know how you can help bring them home. Now, when it comes to using the family to get for Russia to get what they want, if that's the case, they've picked the wrong family because I'm not going to carry water for the Russian authorities. These are some of the most courageous and resilient people among us. I never thought that my mother Nahi Tagavi will ever have a link to negotiations in Vienna about the JCPOA. That's so crazy. People who have never given up hope. Trevor told his girlfriend to tell me to, to be strong. So I'm trying to be strong for Trevor. You know, if, if Trevor can cope with what he's dealing with, exactly. we, we can sure cope with the stress. People who will never stop working to reunite their families. We'd like to meet with the president. Uh, we believe that, you know, he has, uh, he's surrounded by lots of uh, experienced and educated advisors, but I don't believe that any of them have ever had a, a child taken hostage by a foreign country, especially not a superpower like Russia. And we'll be right there by their side until their loved one comes back home. Because um, if enough people care, then the right people will care enough. I'm Darren Nair, and I've been campaigning with many of these families for years. When I first started campaigning with these families, I noticed they struggled to get the media attention they needed. So I decided to create this podcast, which is a safe space for the families to speak as long as they need to about their loved ones and what needs to be done to bring them home. Nobody can prepare you for what our family is going through. Even if someone had told me one year before, in one year, this is going to happen, prepare yourself. It's impossible. Thank you for listening and welcome to Port Hostage Diplomacy. Welcome to Port Hostage Diplomacy. French citizen and tourist Benjamin Breer has been wrongfully imprisoned in Iran since May 2020. He is one of seven French citizens currently wrongfully imprisoned in the country or prevented from leaving Iran. The French Foreign Ministry has referred to them as state hostages. Iran is notorious for arresting innocent foreign nationals on false charges and putting them in prison for years for the purpose of extracting concessions from their home country. This abhorrent practice is state-sponsored hostage-taking, also known as hostage diplomacy. Last month on 28 January, Benjamin started a hunger strike and his family are very concerned for his health. We had the honor of interviewing Benjamin's sister, Blandine Bria, in September last year. We tell all the families we interview that we will keep campaigning by their side until their loved ones are back home, and we mean it. So we'll keep you up to date on their cases through SITREP pods like this one, or breaking news pods. Today, we have the honor of speaking to Blandine Bria once again. Blandine, I'm so sorry for what you, your brother, and your family are going through. Thank you for joining us once again. Yeah, thank you. Blandine, for our listeners who haven't listened to our previous episode, can you please give them a summary of what happened to your brother Benjamin, as in what he was doing in Iran, his arrest, and where he has been detained? Benjamin was traveling in Iran. He, he entered in Iran in December 2019 with his van. He was just a, touring, a tourist visiting Iran with his van and just got arrested uh, at the end of May 2020. Uh, without any reason, and now he has been judged and um, acu accused of being of espionage and propaganda. So he's now sentenced to eight years for espionage and eight months for propaganda without any reason. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, this is this is common uh, in Iran, unfortunately. Since we last spoke in September last year, Blandine, many things have happened in Iran, as you know. There has been an ongoing revolution sparked by the murder of 22-year-old Masa Amini by the Iranian morality police. During this period, many foreign nationals have been arrested and wrongfully imprisoned in Iran, including French nationals. And over two weeks ago, your brother started a hunger strike in prison to protest his wrongful detention. At the same time, you and the families of some other French hostages in Iran held a rally in Paris to urge the Iranian regime and the French government to secure their immediate release. Bernard Fellon, who is a French-Irish citizen, also wrongfully imprisoned in Iran, is in poor health 
as a result of complications from his own hunger strike, which he has ended recently. He needs urgent medical care. And most recently, on Friday 10 February, French academic Fariba Adelka, who has been wrongfully imprisoned in Iran since 5th June 2019, was released from Evin prison. Now, the circumstances of her release are still not clear. We don't know if she can leave the country and return to France to be reunited with her loved ones. A lot has happened since we last spoke. Can you please tell us more about these events if you can and how they affect your brother? Well, yes, now there are seven, and I was very bad, it's, there are six French hostages in Iran. So we, there are many of us, uh, many of them in Iran's jail. So it's just really critical and he knew men because they are all there without any reason. Um, Yes, Benjamin started hunger strike on the 28th of January just to, because this is the only way he has to, to protest uh, against this injustice and to say that, that some, something needs to happen and he, he needs to, to be free as soon as possible and he's just fighting. He's just yeah. He's, he's he tries to to fight with with that anger strike. He, he's now ready to to put his health in, the, in danger to to protest and to 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 have a, a, finally a kind of a justice or a, obviously a freedom. Yeah, and we are of course really happy and and relieved for for Fariba and all the person who who were working on on this freedom. So yes, she's now out of prison and we, we are really happy for that, but uh, looking forward to see her at home in France. Um, and yeah, we actually did a, um, we, we hold a, a rally uh, on the 28th of January with the other French family who were okay to, to talk about this and to, to, to raise their voices for, for press and, and everybody who wanted to support us, uh, in Paris. Uh, so yeah, we were really touched about how many people were there to support us, how um, there are, there were, Lots of press and medias who were supporting us as well. So we need we need this kind of mobilization to to continue to speak about uh, these hostages uh, unjustly detained and to to continue this this fight and that no one's for, forgot them. That's a good thing to do. It's it's it means a lot to the families to the hostages. To know that their loved ones aren't forgotten and that there's a world of care out there when especially when strangers from all walks of life show up to say they support you and they want to bring your loved ones home. So when was the last time you spoke to your brother Benjamin and how is he coping? He, I used to have him every two or three weeks on the phone but it's always depends on the on his situation on the guards in the prisons it's really arbitrary as his detention um so i had him like it was 10 days ago and he was just he was okay and he was really determined about his hunger strike and he wants and he will go further if needed and he will put his health in danger to to have something, something a concrete, concrete element that can help him to, 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 yeah, to see his freedom. He, he is really exhausted of that of this situation, and he doesn't have any any elements to focus on, just to 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 keep hoping of his freedom. So it's really hard to to stay aware and to stay alive. Actually, to have, yeah. He is exhausted, but still determined in his hunger strike. So what should the Iranian authorities do? They need all the hostages free. They, they need to free all, all the hostages. That, that That's the thing, because there are no reason for the incarceration for all of them. So we just need our people back. It's just they are, we are just regular people with regular life and we don't have anything they don't have anything to see with those kind of big issues or big uh, pressure between countries so yeah we just need them to uh, to come back as soon as possible and 
in a relatively good health uh, if possible, but still after three three years it would be difficult for that. Uh, but still, yeah, we they need to hurry. We we need them back as soon as possible. So, what should the French government do? Um, the French government is um, is mobilizing of of this on this issue for sure. It's a priority for them, and I know. They are working uh, for the the um, citizens' freedom. Um, we're sure about that, but still, we have after three, nearly three years, we don't have any concrete elements. Uh, so they obviously need to do more and to do concrete action, to concrete sanctions, concrete I don't know what. But we we need have to have concrete elements to see uh, their their freedom. So m- more needs to be done. What should the European Union do, Landine? Because I know you and a few other European families with loved ones held hostage in Iran published an open letter to the High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. This is Joseph Borrell Fontales, and you sent him that letter last year. Did you ever receive a response? No, we did not have any response uh, from that letter. And nothing really concrete just happened after that. So, yeah, Iran is holding many European citizens in our stage. So something needs to be done on the European level for sure. But still, I'm still a regular person that doesn't know anything about that kind of issue and or solutions, finding solution in Europe. But something needs to be done on the higher level just to something needs to be done just to to accelerate the process um to be stronger with other countries maybe um i'm i'm the one to to analyze and to give advice from this but i know that iran is holding many european citizens and uh, I'm pretty sure we have we are strong strong country that if we go and if if we all are, if we are all working together we could uh, something could happen. So I know you've been getting a bit more media attention recently, which is good. So what can journalists and news editors do to help? So so yeah, journalists and media in in general are really helping us in in that fight, and they are making sure no one uh, forgot the hostage. Uh, they are making sure our message uh, are important and uh, and are listening by by numbers of persons. So yeah, it's really kind of teamwork because they are all uh, they are they are all care about our situation and just try to help us. So that's we are we are really thankful for for the help. Um, just to not forget all the hostages. So, Blandine, what can the public do to help bring your brother home? Unfortunately, there's nothing really to do. Just, just sign petition, share posts on 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 net, different networks on yeah on internet shows. Share share their story to anyone you can. Uh, that's the only thing. Just make make uh, as noise as possible to to make everyone everyone knows uh, those hostages situation and injustice situation blending we're almost at the end of our interview is there anything else you like to mention we need really concrete action so we need just to to push our voice uh, li- louder louder and louder just to yeah we need to make m- more noise about those situations to try to make them change and i know it's not out from our level that the change is gonna gonna happen but still no one's need to forget the the hostages blending will be right here by your side until your brother comes back home thank you for taking the time to speak to us today thank you thank you for listening to pod hostage diplomacy thank you for giving your time and for showing these families that they're not alone, that there are good caring people out there willing to stand by their side and help in any way possible. Um, Because if enough people care, then the right people will care enough. Um, This is a basic 
um, rule of thumb that is true for all campaigning. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our fortnightly newsletter called The Hostage Briefing. It's the best way to keep up to date with the cases we're working on, as well as new episodes. You can subscribe to this newsletter using the link in the description of this podcast episode that you're currently listening to. Thanks again, and take care.